Radiant Church presents Radiant Stories, a collection of stories that showcase God's faithfulness to take our hopeless situations and craft them into beautiful testimonies of His power, provision, and love. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, great. Perfect. It is so good to talk to you. I'm I'm on the phone today with Morgan Combs and Amanda Jensen, and they they are now Nashville residents, but they hail from Kalamazoo originally. Um, but they moved to Nashville with the Nashville church plant. And so I am calling them, my dear old friends, today to talk about that and what it was like and their hearts and their vision. So I want to start with just a little backstory of each of you. I know both of your stories relatively well, um, and both of them are pretty in-depth individually, but I would love to kind of focus on slash hear what it was like kind of moving together and being partners in this sort of faith step with the church plant and stuff like that. Just talk about what led you to decide, both of you, that you wanted to move to Nashville. Honestly, to be vulnerable, uh, I did not want to move to Nashville. (laughs) (laughs) Michigan was good enough for me. And I was like, I just loved calling at home and I loved my people. And So when I started to sense the Lord was telling me to move to Nashville, I kind of shut it out and was like, Mm -hmm. there's no way. Nope, not going. And so it was a real struggle for me because I fought that, but I chose obedience and I moved here. And I can honestly say that I'm so thankful that the Lord picked Morgan to go with me and that we were able to live together and be roommates because I don't know that I would have been able to really get through it without her, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I heard about the Radiant Nashville plant and I was like, okay, have fun. Good luck. (laughs) Um, It was not even a blip on my radar at all or something I would even consider to begin with. And I just remember going over to Amanda's house one night And her other roommate, Rachel, had just decided, was like, I'm going to move to Nashville for the for the church plant. And Amanda was kind of considering it. And they jokingly were like, you should come. And I was like, "Ah." (laughs) no. (laughs) And it was like this. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and was like, but you didn't even ask me. Mm -hmm. You didn't even ask me if you should go. Mm-hmm. And I always know I'm in trouble if the Holy Spirit corrects me like that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and so I just felt like he was like, you didn't even ask if, if you should go or you didn't even consider it. And so um, that began the process of just asking the Lord if this is something I should do. And honestly, it wasn't like a writing in the sky. It wasn't like... There was a banner that flew through the sky that said, move to Nashville. It honestly was just a choice I made. And it took a few days and weeks. And for some reason, I just began to love the city of Nashville. And I started gaining a love for it. And I ended up asking the Lord, can I go? And he said, yeah, let's do it together. And so, yeah, I know that you guys we're pretty close friends before, um, but talk about how your relationship has grown. And cause I know it's not all daisies and roses when you do a church plant and when you literally are sold out for the Lord and you sell all your stuff and move after visiting the place one <laughs> time. Um, <laughs> and just, I, I mean, I just want to hear kind of like how your friendship has grown and really specific things that the Lord has revealed to you guys through the process. Well, For me, I had lived in Michigan with the same beautiful humans for the last like four years. So to give perspective on that, I'm 28 years old and I lived with girls that were in their late 20s and then eventually in their 30s. And so we just had gotten used to each other. And I knew that because I'd known Morgan previously and I knew her maturity and 
I knew her heart and I knew her, her fire for the Lord. I was like, I don't know that I could live with anybody else. And we definitely had to work out some frustrations and just having uncomfortable conversations. And it has really caused me personally to face my fears and and because my my natural instinct as a human I think is just to run and to hide and to avoid conflict and I'm thankful for the past year that I was at Radiant because I think that I was under some really amazing leadership I was under Pastor Stefan and under Candace Davis and and I think they really showed me what healthy confrontation and communication looked like and so I was able to carry that honestly it's just caused our relationship to grow stronger and deeper. And I'm like, wow, I love this human so freaking much. (laughs) So it's just, it's been worth it. Every, every struggle and every awkward moment and every insecurity that, you know, I feel like I've personally had to overcome. I'm like, it was just the Lord's goodness and his own kindness that he's like, I'll give you Morgan to like work that out. And I'm like, wow, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) So that's my side of it. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, logistically, it was the first thing that made sense because our timelines kind of ran parallel to each other and we're planning on moving at the same time. So logistically, it made sense to move in together um, and financially, because to be quite honest, it is so expensive to live here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was like a huge part of our leap of faith is knowing that. Um, we're already really tight on budgets and it's triple to live in this city than in Kalamazoo. And so it made sense to move in together and to be really transparent. The first six months were so difficult, Yep. not just like living together, but personally, we had so much that we had to face in ourselves in the first six months it was something at like the seven month mark of being here. It was like something just broke off of us and we started coming alive again. Yeah. The first seven months felt like we were just trying to tread water spiritually, emotionally, trying to create community, all of that stuff. And it was really about seven months. Something just like broke and we started living again. And I feel like our friendship and our relationship has like just grown together since then. And so... We're really thankful for each other. We're thankful for the hard stuff we had to do. Um, I wouldn't change it. So Same. Yeah. What you guys have is a very encouraging picture of friendship, female friendship. You, you guys are kind of thrown. Yes, you chose each other, but you were kind of thrown into a situation together. And much like, you know, any marriage or something like that, you're coexisting pretty cl- in pretty close quarters, coming to a place where your insecurity once you've gotten on top of it, it's so much easier to speak truth about each other. Even if one person is in that place, it's so hard for the other person if they're still kind of within their own insecurity and in in their own head, because then you end up resenting the other person for trying to speak truth into your life. So that is so encouraging. I feel like you guys individually, your testimonies are so, so cool, but you've created this whole new beautiful garden as friends in this place that the Lord has called you to, which is so, so awesome. Talk about kind of the church plant and what you guys do there. I know you're both on the worship team and that's something that you're both very, very good at. You're anointed in worship, both of you. Talk about how that's been. I mean, talk about kind of the the team dynamic and um, what it looks like. What What does a typical weekend look like for you guys? So a typical weekend for us, the Lord blessed us with getting a spot at the Brentwood Family YMCA, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit southwest of Nashville. It's like on the outskirts of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And with their facility hours, we're able to go in after they close on Saturday night, which is at 8.30 p.m. And we're able to set up all of our wonderful gear. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then we are able to occupy the building from 8.30 p.m. Saturday until 11.30 a.m. Sunday. And so a typical weekend looks like we have a setup and pair down team that will go on Saturday nights. And then we will come in as a worship team, usually at 6.30 in the morning, maybe 7, because we don't have a building to rehearse in. So we have to get up super early on Sundays to 
you know, rehearse and then we have service and service usually starts with us getting together as team radiant. And we actually pray together and pastor Tony will usually have a scripture or a word for us, or we'll share something encouraging in our lives before we actually get started, which is at 9am when the doors open. And then we have to be out of there, torn down, nothing radiant left in the building by 1130 AM. It is, it's hard. (laughs) I will say that other church planners that have gone before us and have spoken over us and kind of trying to give us like a heads up or like, this is going to be really hard just so you know. (laughs) And I just want to say, yeah, you're right. (laughs) Yeah, You were right. There was like, really no way that you could express with just level of hard that it was going to be church planning is not sexy at all um <laughs> it sounds very cool and uh, until it's 4 30 and mm-hmm. you've woken up to go set up church on sunday just to tear it down six hours later mm-hmm. but honestly it's so rewarding in every moment that we feel like oh my god I don't want to wake up again or I don't want to go set up we just think to the stories of people finding radiant and starting to call it home and the transformation that's taken place in people's lives and the way that God is growing us and reminding ourselves of the promises God has made to us about the city makes it so worth it. Mm. Amanda really mapped out a good outline of what our weekend logistically looks like. Before we even launched in September, we did a lot of practical stuff. I mean, on our free time, we were the ones who were planning out the layouts and designing things and giving a lot of ourselves to the logistical side of the church plant and all starting to take on some weight. So yes, we lead worship on the weekends, but also we do a lot of legwork. I mean, anywhere from setting up chairs to hanging pipe and drape to making coffee to cleaning the bathrooms, like Mm -hmm. We do whatever it takes, and um, it really is so rewarding getting to know new people and the way that they have come to find us. Everybody has a really beautiful individual story of how they found Mm -hmm. Radiant, and it makes it all worth it in the end. And so we're really thankful for Radiant Nashville. Wow. That's so sweet. I I appreciate your guys' honesty and candor because people will say, like you said, Amanda, it's hard. (laughs) Like it's going to be so hard and you can't, you literally cannot know until you are in it. You can't know how truly hard it will be because it's not just, it's not just the giving of yourself when you're in ministry. It's not like just the early hours. It's not just the manual labor. It's the emotional toll that it takes on you too. (laughs) We don't want to go on here sounding like we're like, Going church plant. It's the worst. It has <laughs> no, no, honestly no. been so incredible. But I mean, you can't talk about the good things without talking about the very difficult things. Right. And I think the difficult things make the good things even better because Perfect. you see the cost mm-hmm. and it outweighs it. I think the Lord has just shown up and, and he's the reason. I mean, he without a doubt has shown up every single weekend, even the weeks before we even had a building, even before we officially launched, like his presence would come in. And it's like, he was just like, yes, I called you here. Yes. I want you here. Yes. I have you here. And I'm here with you because if he wasn't, then it wouldn't be worth it. And so I think he's, he's been so gracious to show up and, and his presence comes even in like a small moment when we're like setting up pipe and drape, like it's just something it's like, you just hear his whisper in little moments and you're like, okay, you're with us. Mm-hmm. Like you're here and, and you make it all worth it. That's so sweet. That's such like a, a tender, very, very sweet depiction of how the Lord has met you guys in this season. So how, how long have you actually been there now? 10, almost 11 months. We'll co- um, our one year's in May, so we're coming that's up. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought. I feel like the Lord is going to do something big for you guys at the one year mark, even just in your lives and in your relationship, because I know kind of what's taken place recently. I know, Morgan, you got a new job and Amanda, you are like following your dreams, which is amazing. And you've had a lot of stuff in the past few months that have just broken off. And I feel like one year is going to be so significant. Us too. 
That makes me excited for our one year. Yeah. Honestly, seven months. That seven months is we make it December and into January. Our church started a churchwide fast seek like they do in Richland. We did it here. And I think that's when we saw some of the greatest breakthrough in our lives. That's when we saw the Lord move. Yeah. Um, both Amanda and I got new job offers in the same week. We both offered pay higher than anybody else really was making or started at. Um, we got like things we prayed for during the fast. We actually saw them happen and within weeks. I just feel like we are coming alive and I can't wait to see what one year holds. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. Well, you will probably see myself and Elena, sound engineer. You know, Elena. Oh my gosh, yes. This summer, because we're going to do a little tour and we're going to come interview people at at the church plants around, you know, oh. we'll go to Ludington, we'll go to Jackson, we'll go, we'll go around and then we'll come to you guys for just an extended period of time, I think. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh so, I'm so excited oh. to see you guys. And man, I'm so thankful for both of you. I love you both as friends so much. I'm so excited to see you. So I, I appreciate both of you. Thank you for t- taking time out of your day to have this phone call with me. I think you guys have a really significant special testimony as two female friends that have kind of partnered together in a call (laughs) um, and taken the same exact leap of faith at the same time. And I feel like it's, it's all for such a time as this. It's really powerful that you guys have gone through this together. And I, I think that the story is just beginning. It's just unfolding. And I think that there's something to what the Lord is doing in both of your lives. Even if it leads you in different directions, I feel like you guys are going to be connected forever, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Amen. We're so thankful we got to talk to you and share our story. I'm going to say goodbye. We don't have to get off the phone, but we can. Okay. I'm just going to hit the stop button. This has been Radiant Stories. Click subscribe to get a brand new story delivered to you every Monday.